afternoon. Welcome to Fall Tommy Days at the University of St. Thomas. We're delighted to have you join us today. My name is Kristen Hatfield and I'm the Director of Admissions and I am your moderator for this beginning section of today's Fall Tommy Days event. I'm going to first go through all the housekeeping details related to Zoom and related to what the program will look like, and then we will officially kick off our event. So let me start with the long list of things I want to make sure that you know. Uh, first of all, you are muted upon entry, so I don't want anyone to panic and think that we can hear anything that, we're, that you're saying. Um, we cannot hear you, and um, we're happy to have you here, and hopefully you're sitting somewhere comfortable with family members being able to soak everything in and talk through things as you listen to us today. We do have, um, I'm sure many of you are familiar with Zoom by now, but the Q&A on the bottom of your screen is the way that you can ask questions of us today. And we love questions. We're definitely hoping to have some time at each of the sessions for questions. So just go ahead as they come to you and please type them into the Q&A section and we will answer them either live if we get to them or we also have staff on the back end who can help to answer any of your questions. So that's how we can take care of making sure that you walk out of your room today and log off and know everything you'd like to know at this point about the University of St. Thomas. Let me talk to you about what our content looks like for this afternoon. Um, first, we're gonna get things kicked off with some general information to give you a really good understanding about the University of St. Thomas. And then I'll spend a little bit of time talking about the application process. Then we'll take a little bit of a break and um, come back to a student panel they will be talking about life outside of the classroom. The next feature after that will be um, some faculty and students talking about the academic experience at St. Thomas. And then we'll finally close out this section with the financial aid team answering your questions and talking to you about the financial aid process. As I mentioned, we will have a few minutes of break in between each of those different sections. So you will have time to stretch your legs a little bit. And the good news is you can actually stay logged on to this very same link. This link will carry through throughout all of those different features that I mentioned this afternoon so you don't need to jump on and off to get to the next group. We'd love to have you stay with us the whole afternoon as we go through those different sessions. Um, as a reminder, you also got some fabulous content on the St. Thomas Experience page and there are lots of fun features for you to look at there. There are academic departments that have uh, pre-recorded materials. There's um, features on students and faculty. Uh, we also have, this is my favorite thing, we have this beautiful app that will give you a guided, self-guided tour of campus and you can look at all the different sections of campus and get a really good sense of what the campus looks like and hear some great stories from our students on that app. So I do encourage you to spend some time on that page and you'll hear more about the university that way. All right, one final thing, we are recording the webinar today and if you want to come back to the Recording at any point in time, if there's things you missed or you want to share with people, we'll be sure to send that link out and let you know where you can find it on our website in a few days. All right, so without any further ado, we're going to get started with the general info. I would like to introduce Abby and Mariah, who are two of the admission staff here at the university, who are going to tell you all about St. Thomas. Awesome. Thank you, Kristen. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Abby Cherinet. I work here at St. Thomas as a senior admissions counselor, and I've been working here for about four years now. And before that, I was a student at St. Thomas, I majored in business, I graduated in 2016, and my college experience at St. Thomas was awesome. It was very well-rounded, you know, academics were great, made a lot of great connections with, um, you know, faculty and staff on campus, met a lot of my lifelong friends here, and as I kept getting more and more involved on campus, higher education really seemed like a cool route to kind of go after um, right after college. So here I am today. And um, my job is to recruit and counsel uh, high school students going through the college application process. And the territories that I cover are Illinois, pretty much the whole East Coast of the United States and Egan and Eastview for my local schools. And definitely excited for all of you to be tuned in today. Hi everyone, my name is Mariah Bertram. I'm also an admissions counselor here at the University of St. Thomas. 
so good to meet you all. We're so grateful that you joined us for a little bit this afternoon. Um, I grew up in Coon Rapids, Minnesota, so just about 30 minutes north of St. Paul. Um, I graduated from the university back in 2014, so I'm feeling kind of old compared to all of you high school students now. Um, but I double majored in communication and journalism as well as family studies. Um, I'm currently working on my master's in Catholic studies right now. Um, while I was an undergraduate student, um, I was a tour guide, I was an orientation leader, I kind of worked my way through college, which was kind of cool. Um, I was also a really proud member of the intramural beanbag team, which I'm sure my parents were really proud of. Um, it was a great way to meet new friends, though. Um, but I recruit from all of the Catholic high schools in the Twin Cities. So if you um, go to any of the Catholic schools in St. Paul or Minneapolis, I'll be your go-to resource for the next year or two of your college decision process. Um, but let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so the University of St. Thomas is the largest private school in the state of Minnesota. We have about 10,000 students total. About 6,000 of those are undergraduate students and about 4,000 are graduate students. Um, this screen is just kind of a snapshot of the makeup of our campus community. We have about 17% students of color, students from all across the country, all across the world. Um, diversity is something that's really, really important to us at St. Thomas, and it's something that we celebrate. Um, we think that living and learning in a community of people from all different backgrounds, all different places throughout the world, um, really enriches your education and your college experience in general. So now we're gonna talk about our locations. Um, so we have a few different campuses. Uh, in St. Paul, that's where our main undergrad campus is, so serving those 6,000 undergrad students that Mariah was just talking about. Uh, Minneapolis is more of our graduate students, so like MBA, law school, and it also houses our um, Doherty Family College as well. So like Mariah was saying, we have about 10,000 total students, which makes us more of a mid-sized university. So it's like, we're big enough in the sense where you can meet new people every day and get new experiences every day. And then we're small enough in the sense where you still get a tight knit community, right? Our average class size is 21, which we'll talk a little bit more um, a little later. So what I really loved about the location when I was a student here was how centralized it was to everything that you need to go, need to go to. So like we're only 10 to 15 minutes away from downtown Minneapolis. So for me, it was super easy to get downtown um, to get to like a Timberwolves game or a Minnesota Twins game or go to a concert at First Ave um, or go, go out to eat downtown with my friends. Um, 10 to 15 minutes east of campus is downtown St. Paul. So that's where my favorite pizza place is, Cassetta's, and that's where my barbershop is as well. So super close. And then um, 10 to 12 minutes south of us is the airport um, and the Mall of America for those of you who like to shop. So we're definitely like right in the middle of everywhere that you would want to be in. And the cool thing is we're in the city, but it's a very residential part of the city. So it's not like a lot of distractions. Um, you know, it's pretty peaceful, pretty safe generally. Um, the Mississippi River is only a couple blocks away. So it's kind of like that best of both worlds feel where you can focus on your studies at our St. Paul campus. Um, but if you want to like go to the entertainment district in downtown Minneapolis, it's super close. So you get that best of both worlds feel. Um, and then we have a campus in Rome called our Bernardi campus where students like to go study abroad. And we'll talk more about study abroad opportunities in a little bit. So as I mentioned at the very beginning, St. Thomas is the largest private school in Minnesota. Um, outside of the classroom, you're very much going to feel like you go to a big school in terms of opportunities for involvement on, cap on campus, um, options for majors. Um, but in the classroom, you're going to feel like more than just a test score, more than just another student ID number. Our average class size is right around 21 students at St. Thomas. Every single one of our classes is taught by a professor, so you're never ever going to have a teaching assistant or a graduate student um, in a teaching role. It's always going to be a faculty member. They're going to know your name. They're going to get to know what you're passionate about, whether you want them to or not. Um, like I said, I graduated from St. Thomas several years ago, and a number of my professors I've kept in touch with, even since graduating um, six years ago now, they're people who have become mentors in my life and recommended me for different jobs and for graduate school. Um, so get ready for that too. They're not just going to be people in your life who you'll spend time with for four months and never talk to them again. Um, they're going to become really important people in your life. 
Um, but at St. Thomas, we do have over 150 different majors and minors that you can choose from. Um, our number one largest major is business. We have 13 different business concentrations that you can choose to study once you're here. Um, and just about 38% of all of our undergraduate students are choosing to study something in business. So if you're thinking of going the business route, you'd be in really good company. Um, number two is the health sciences. That's kind of the umbrella academic area for any of those pre-health checks. Um, pre-medicine, pre-physician assistant, pre-physical therapy, um, biology, chemistry, biochemistry. Um, journalism is number three. Um, engineering is our fourth largest program and it's rapidly growing every year. Um, we're one of the only private schools in Minnesota that has an engineering program. Um, so it can be a really great fit for, for students who know that they wanna study engineering um, at a smaller school. Um, we've got mechanical, electrical, computer, and civil engineering. Um, and then our fifth largest program is psychology. If you're sitting here and you're like, oh my gosh, I have no idea what the heck I wanna study in college. Um, don't worry at all. Um, undecided is our most popular major starting as a freshman. Um, and there's a ton of support services for students um, who are really discerning what they'd like to study, um, especially our career development center. You can go in and take different interest tests or different personality tests. Um, our campus is small enough where you can have conversations with professors or upperclassmen just to kind of pick their brains before you officially declare your major. Um, so long story short, don't stress at all if you don't know what you want to study. Um, you've got plenty of time to figure it out. So obviously when you go to college, um, you know, academics is going to be the number one priority. At least I'd hope that it's the number one priority for you. Uh, so you want to do well in school, you know, make good connections with your professors, stuff like that. But something that is also very, very important is what are you doing outside of the classroom to really complement your education? And that's where extracurricular activities really come into play. And I'm sure all of you are heavily involved in your community, at your high school, at your church, like whatever. And that's good. You know, keep up that good work because that's going to make you a very well-rounded candidate for when you apply to all those different colleges. And it'll get you in the right mindset for once you get to college. Because once you get to college, getting involved in different student clubs and organizations is really a great way to meet new people and especially meet new people that have similar interests as you. So like, one thing that I was involved in when I was at St. Thomas uh, was uh, me and one of my friends had a radio show on campus and it was super fun. You know, we both love music. We both love to talk and crack jokes and all that. So we were like, let's do a radio show. So the opportunities are truly endless. Like you can get involved in one of our over 120 different student clubs and organizations, whether it's a, you know, a social club, a service club or an academic club. Um, you can play sports on campus. You know, we are the first Division three school to make the jump directly to Division one. So we're literally like in the history books right now. And it's super fun to kind of be a part of history like that. So whether you're interested in like track and field or basketball, softball, soccer, whatever it is, um, you can look into that if you're interested in varsity sports. Um, if you're like me and Mariah, you know, we were, we were all into like intramural sports. We also have that as well. And what that is, is you pretty much form a team with your friends, whether it's for intramural basketball or softball or beanbag toss, and then you play against other St. Thomas students. So it's a nice way to just stay active and get involved in fun things outside of the classroom. Um, and then we are a Catholic institution. So there are a lot of ways that you can really grow in your faith, um, whether you're Catholic or whether you practice a different religion. We have a, an awesome Center for Campus Ministry here on campus. Um, and they do a lot of different things like interfaith dialogues, uh, different faith-based retreats, um, there are different faith-based clubs, seminars, stuff like that. So there are countless ways that, you know, you can grow in your faith, regardless of what religion you practice. Studying abroad is another excellent way to get involved and invest in your campus community once you're in college. Um, Studying abroad is something that's super encouraged at St. Thomas and very accessible regardless of what year you are um, and regardless of your major. Um, I've heard that the national average for percentage of undergraduate students that study abroad is right around 11%. Um, at St. Thomas, just about 59% of all of our undergrads are choosing to study abroad at least once, so it's well over half. Um, we do have over 100 programs in over 50 different countries um, throughout the world, so tons of opportunities at your fingertips. Um, but we do operate on a 414 academic schedule. So that means we have four months of a fall semester, 
four months of a spring semester, and then one month of a January term. Um, January term, if you've never heard of it, it's just the whole month of January. Um, it's optional to take a class. So it is their most popular time to study abroad because you're just committing to about three or four weeks abroad instead of a whole year or a whole semester. Um, a recent January when we could be traveling all over the world, um, we did send over 600 Tommies abroad to over 22 different countries just during the month of January. Um, one of my roommates in college, she took a J-term course in Tanzania um, and knocked out, I think it was one of her core curriculum courses. Um, and she also got to volunteer in an orphanage um, to kind of supplement um, what she was learning in the classroom too, which is really cool. Um, one of my coworkers at St. Thomas, she did four different J-term trips um, during her four years at St. Thomas, and she was still able to graduate in four years. Um, she was a Spanish major, um, so she went to a number of Spanish-speaking countries. Um, one of our largest programs is called the London Business Semester. Um, so it's for our undergraduate business students. You get to go and live and learn in London for about four months, which is pretty neat. Um, we've got a semester at sea, which is also really popular, where you can live and learn on this big, cool boat. Um, take some of your core curriculum classes and you get to visit like 10 different countries throughout the semester. Um, but some of our most popular destinations are Italy, the UK, Spain, China, and Australia. Um, and like Abby said at the very beginning, we do have a University of St. Thomas campus that's over in Rome, Italy. Um, so it's popular for our students to go and take a theology class over um, in Rome on our St. Thomas campus. So, <clears throat> excuse me. I know all the students here are excited to finally move out of the house, get away from the parents. I was there, so I understand. But um, so I know earlier I said like, you know, getting involved on campus is a great way to meet new people. Another great way to meet new people is um, living in the residence halls. So starting in fall 2021, we're going to have a two year on campus residency requirement. So your first two years, you'll be required to live on campus. And one thing that I really liked when I was living on campus at St. Thomas was that I got to move in a week early before classes even started. Um, because for incoming first year students, there's something called Welcome Week. And Welcome Week has a bunch of activities, you know, and it's really used to, to help um, incoming first year students really feel acclimated and feel adapted to campus. So there's all sorts of different programming where you can meet all the other uh, first year students and feel comfortable once that like first day of school rolls around. Um, another cool function within residence life that we have that I wanna highlight is called our living learning communities, LLC for short. And what those are, those are um, special interest floors within the residence halls. So there's specific areas within the residence halls that are dedicated to specific interests. Um, we have a, a good amount of them. You can go on our website and check them out. Uh, just to put it into context, one that we offer is called Pathways to Engineering. So it's engineering students living on one floor together, and they're all enrolled in the same engineering class. So it's a nice way to kind of build community among similar academic interests. It's not required, but just know that you have options if that's something that you're interested in. Great. Thanks, Abby. Um, so one thing that we want all of you to just remember if you take away one thing from today um, is to just know that you have a whole team of people at St. Thomas who are so, so excited to work with you throughout your college decision process. Um, these are pictures of all of our admissions counselors at St. Thomas. Um, depending on what state you live in and where you go to high school, um, one of these counselors is your personal admissions counselor. So if you do think of any questions after today, um, go ahead and shoot us an email at admissions at stthomas.edu and we'd love to get you in touch with your personal admissions counselor. Um, thank you so much for hanging out with us for the last 10 minutes or so. It was a joy to speak with all of you. Um, we're going to go ahead and kick it back to our Director of Admissions, Kristen Hatfield, so she can share a little bit more about what we look for in our applicants um, and what the enrollment process is like at the University of St. Thomas. Thank you so much, Abby and Mariah. That was a great introduction to the University of St. Thomas. And now we're gonna talk, as Maria mentioned, about the admission application process, because I know many of you are in that part of your senior year where you are getting applications out and may have some questions about it. So in the next 10 minutes or so, we're gonna talk through what we look for and what the process is all about. First of all, I wanna give you a little background about myself. Um, I didn't share that at the top because I wanted to say it here. Um, 
I am uh, also a proud St. Thomas alum. I have both my undergrad and my graduate degree from this university. I like to tell people I came on campus as an undergrad and I really never left. I kind of put the purple on and it stuck with me. It's a wonderful place to be. Um, I also am the mom of three and I have ventured into a new part of my career where I have a senior in high school for the first time. And so I am not only doing this as a profession, but I'm also living this experience as a mom, walking my daughter through this experience as she applies for college. So it has been fun. It has been exciting. It has been surprising. <laughs> and I will say, um, Everything that you're feeling, it's no different if your mom has worked in college admissions for 20 plus years. It's just part of the process. So let's dive in. I'll start first with the timeline because I want to make sure that we talk through our application deadlines and the two ways that you can apply at St. Thomas. We do have two different application options. One is called early action and then the second is called regular decision. I do like to, especially here as we're in October, talk a little bit more about early action. The deadline, as you can see for that one, is November 1st, which can anyone believe what day in October it is and that it's coming up that quickly? But yes, November 1st is our very first deadline. And we do encourage students, especially if you're sitting here right now and you're looking at St. Thomas, early action is a really good option for you. Essentially what it means is that it's in, you're in our first round of applications that we will review. There's no different timelines, no different requirements, no, nothing special about it other than it's the very first deadline that we have. If you apply by November 1, you will hear a decision from us and your merit scholarship information by December 15th. And then we ask that you make a decision by May 1st. And that deposit date is the same regardless of if you apply early action or regular decision, as you can see. If you don't quite make it into that first application round, our next deadline is January 15th. We call that one regular decision. We let you know within a month or so by February 15th. And then of course, as I mentioned, May 1st is the deposit date for that one as well. The nice feature about it, um, just to back up a little bit with the November 1 deadline, we ask that you have your application submitted, but there is a little bit of wiggle room for a couple of days if we need to get your high school transcript sent over to us um, and any other required pieces of your application. But the big thing is making sure that you've sat down, filled out the actual application and hit submit by that November 1 deadline. And as you'll see below, we do take either the Common App or St. Thomas has its own application that you can find at that URL website. And um, both of them are just fine. We don't see any comparison or we don't wish you would have done the Common App or wish you would have done the St. Thomas app. Quite frankly, it comes in and we see no difference between the two as we're reviewing it on our end. So whatever you prefer is just fine by us, either the St. Thomas app or the Common App. So those are the deadlines. Let me walk you through a little bit now about what we review and what pieces of the application you'll be sending. As I mentioned, we do require a high school transcript. We do look at your grade point average, your cumulative GPA, which will be anything that you have usually up until the end of your junior year, especially if you're applying early action, will only have grades from your first three years of high school. And then we do take into consideration all sorts of things as we're reviewing your high school record and your grade point average. Um, things like at the end, the strength of schedule. So have you taken some challenging courses? Have you pushed yourself to the best of your ability? Um, does your school weight grades? That is a, we see a mix of that on the high school transcript. Some schools weight grades and we will take the weighted grade point average if they do. Some schools don't weight grades and we note that as we're working through the application. You know, so if a student is concerned that their grade point average isn't as high as a different school that does weight grades, please know that we're paying attention to that as we're reviewing the application. The other piece that's big this year that I want to reassure people about, of course, COVID-19 impacted a lot of people's spring semesters. Your school may have just done pass-fail and you wouldn't have had a choice otherwise. Um, they might have given you grades, but it didn't impact your grade point average. We're starting to see that as we review applications. Schools handled the spring semester very differently. And so we are just noting that um, and being really mindful that a lot of what happened in the spring semester was very much out of your control. So we don't want you to stress too much about it. If you do have any special notes, you can always just include that in your 
in your application and tell us what might have happened. Um, and then this just goes without saying, obviously we see grades up until your junior year, but we will ask for a final high school transcript when you enroll at St. Thomas. So please be sure that you don't have any senior slide, keep working hard all the way through your senior year. The next piece I'll talk about is test scores. And this year we did become a test optional institution. So this is our very first year where you can choose to either send or not send a test score. And as luck would have it, we made that decision prior to the pandemic. Um, but since then, we've noted that a lot of students are really struggling to take a test or take more than one test if they wanted to improve their score. Um, so I wanna reassure students, I'm gonna jump right to the end here, that test scores are not going to be a factor in our merit scholarship for fall of 2021. So please do not hold up your application. We're hearing a lot of people saying, sure, I, I think I'll be fine with admission, but I wanna make sure you have my test score for scholarships. And I am happy to report that we are what's called test blind for our scholarship process this year, meaning it will not impact one way or the other. Um, we simply won't be factoring that into our scholarship process. So I encourage you to consider if you have a test and you're happy with it, go ahead and choose the option on our application that's apply with a test score. And you can actually self report those scores, just pop them right into the application with the date that you took the test. If you don't have a score at all, or you're waiting to take one, um, please don't hold up your application for that. Just go ahead and apply without a test score and we will make a decision without that test score in your application. It's really just as simple as that. The next few items I wanna talk about are um, first, the essay. We do have two essay prompts on our application that we ask you to complete. And what we really are looking for here is just to get to know you more as an individual and as a person. These are recommended. They won't hold up your application if you choose not to do them. Um, but it is nice, again, to read a little bit about yourself. So take that into consideration when you're choosing if you will or won't send that essay. And I can promise you that the admissions counselors read them all and I read them as they come through the admission process. And it is fun to get to know students. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is letters of recommendation. Again, this is something that we recommend, although it's not required. We will go ahead and make a decision on your application if you don't have any letters of recommendation. The best advice I can give you here is, um, first of all, one to two is just fine. Um, I would say any more than three, unless you've got a lot of different people sharing different stories. After that, we really read a lot of the same pieces about you. So that's the good number to include if you're asking that question. Make sure you're choosing people who know you really well and can write about your experience. Um, we do like to see the ones who can talk about your academic record and how you perform in the classroom. And then my best piece of advice is make sure you don't go in two days before you're going to submit your application and ask for a letter of recommendation. Remember your teachers and the people in your life are also really busy and you're going to get a much better letter of recommendation if you just give a little time to actually do that. So keep that in mind as well. And then the final piece that we look at on your application is the activities and the involvement that you have. And this can be everything that you've been involved in. I know Hobby referenced this. We like to see involved students who are doing all sorts of fun things. And whether that's intramural sports that you've been part of, or if you've been really involved as an athlete or in community service, church activities, all of those are really fun pieces of information for you to share in your application and brag about yourself a little bit. The other piece that we hear a lot from students is, I haven't really done a lot because I've worked a lot through high school. Tell us about that. Tell us how many hours per week you work. Um, that is definitely something that keeps you busy and is an activity and involvement that fills your day. And that's really what we're looking to see here is what you're doing outside of the classroom that either brings you joy or keeps you busy or whatever it might be. So activities involvement, you can put into a resume and simply attach that in your application or you can type it out. There's a section on our application where you can literally put each section or each item that you're involved in right into the application. Those are your two options. All right, the next thing is time for questions. So I'm gonna look quick. It looks like maybe a lot of the questions that we had have been answered on the back end as I've been talking. And I'm gonna keep us moving right along and just keep, give a huge thank you for all of you for being here with us today. A big thank you out to Abby and Mariah for their help getting to, know, getting to share St. Thomas with you a little bit. 
and then we will take a short few minutes here before we head into the next session.